Hey guys, uh, I wanted to try something a little different in class today. Oh, if you didn't recognize it, it's me, Mr. L, you know, your science teacher. I want to try something new today. How about that? Something new. Have you ever heard of those things called Draw My Life? For instance, my pregnant wife and I one day went to the doctor's office. We went to see what was going to be a routine ultrasound. At least that's what we thought. The ultrasound tech said, oh, you guys aren't having one baby. You guys are having two. You guys are having twins. It was at this point when I looked at my beautiful wife and she looked at the ultrasound tech and said, ha 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 ha, that's a nice joke. Nope, it's not a joke. At which point I thought to myself, oh man, I'm going to have two kids. This is awesome. But then I started thinking, oh, I'm going to have to get rid of my beautiful Scion TC. Get rid of the Scion TC for one of those minivans. Ugh. So that was an example of draw my life. So what I want to do is kind of do something a little similar, but have it apply to what we're talking about in science. So I'm going to have it called draw my science. Now, it wouldn't be fitting unless the D was shaped like the Ducks logo. So what I want to do is first we need to have an answer or respond, but anytime I point at this during the video, I want you to respond with an answer to any question I may have. So let's get started by reviewing a little bit. What I'm going to draw here is an atom. Now, you all know what an atom is. It consists of quite a few different things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, protons are what type of charge? Actually answer this time. Good. Protons are positive. Then we have neutrons, which are neutral, and then electrons, which are negative. Now, how do we find this out? Well. Let's go ahead and take an element block, for instance, beryllium. We know that the atomic number tells you the number of protons, but also tells you the number of electrons. That's right. So if we count them up, we have four protons and we have four electrons. But how do we find the number of neutrons? Do you remember? Well, you have to round off the atomic mass, so that rounds off to nine. You subtract it by the number of protons, and that will give you five neutrons. So the next thing that we're going to talk about, um, the new thing that we're going to talk about today, are valence electrons. Now, I'm sure you're kind of wondering, well, with shrug shoulders, what's that? Well, if we compare valence electrons to, let's say, a pizza, there's pepperonis, but then there's also the crust. Now, no matter how big or small the pizza is, the crust is always on the outside. That's the same thing we're talking about with valence electrons. So if we talk about um, another atom, for instance, beryllium, which is the example we used earlier, we have four total electrons, but how many valence electrons do we have? That's right, two, because two are on the very outside of it. Now I know what you're thinking, great, I have to draw out the atom every single time I want to find valence electrons. But if you get to a huge atom that has a lot of shells, then it gets to be very difficult. Well. There was a Russian scientist, hopefully you remember his name, that developed the periodic table. His name was Dmitry Mendeleev. And when he developed the periodic table, every element had its place. Without it being in its place, it wouldn't make sense. So there were many different reasons for him doing this, much like the pieces of a puzzle. Every piece of the puzzle has its place to make up the whole thing. If there's a piece missing, you would know. Same thing with the periodic table. He arranged it in that specific way. So when we're talking about the periodic table, it goes by groups. So everything in the first column has one valence electron. Everything in the second column has two valence electrons. We skip the transition metals. Then we go to group 13. You just cross out the one in front of it. So that one has three. Then group 14 has four. Group 15 has five. And then group 16 has six. Group 17 has seven and group 18 has 8. So depending on what element the or what group the element is in, you can determine how many valence electrons is in that element. 